All right, Mia, I'll come your way first because I was reading the press notes and I was shocked when they referred to this as your first leading role because I feel like I've seen you stand out in so much at this point. So I guess first, what was your reaction to booking the part? Because when I read that, my first reaction was like, it's about damn time. Yeah, I was really excited um, to find out that I that I booked this uh, to this role, you know. But that excitement doesn't last very long, and 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 that's quickly replaced by just a lot of anticipation and anxiety to to hope that you know I am I'm able to to do Ty and and the film and, and the rest of my cast justice because you know it was a lot to take on with Maxine and 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 Pearl and you know, she's playing um, a girl from. Uh, from the south, you know, it just couldn't really be. It was just very far away from who from who I am. Uh, but yeah, it was. Uh, I, I definitely welcomed the challenge, and and it was something that I wanted to do, and so I was very excited to to, to be a part of it. Job very well done. It paid off big time. One more question for you now. Uh, what is something that you picked up from a number one on the call sheet on a previous film that you found really coming in handy when you were the lead on X? Your behavior, your work ethic, the, the, the way that you, uh, you know, relate to the crew and how you treat everyone around you, it really does have a trickle down effect. And I, I have seen that in other instances where I've worked with, you know, you know, actors that I really look up to and they've always treated the, the cast and the crew really well. And, and um, it pays off and it just creates a better environment. Everyone's happier and, 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 and ultimately um, the work is better off for it. Could not agree more. Always appreciate hearing that. All right, Brittany, unless I am missing something, it has been a very long time since you've done a horror movie. So why the wait? And then when you got onto the set of X, was there anything that made you say like, wow, I really missed that part of making a horror movie? Yes, you're not wrong. It's been 10 years. Uh, I did Would You Rather when I was 25. Um, I just gave away my age. Why would I do that? Um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but I, I... I love doing horror movies because I think that there's a intricacy there of um, making something suspenseful, but layered and you are just having a blast because it's so it's, it's escapism to its finest, right? It's, it's so um, over the top in terms of like what you get to do. And as a human being, you get to tap into places that you're hopefully never going to go through. And so um, it really expands your imagination in, in a new way. And so I, I really, I love it. I, I missed it. Would you rather is so damn good. I rewatched that movie too often. It's such a great concept. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Jenna. So you have the opposite thing where you've done a lot of horror back to back to back. And if I have my dates right, I believe you filmed this before Scream. So was there anything that you experienced or learned while making X that you found coming in handy on that movie? No, I actually I booked X while I was on screen. So it was like I actually I got the call from Ty while I was with Matt and Tyler. So they all shared hellos and also kind of caught up because they used to work together in the past, which was kind of funny. Um, but if I were to flip the script and if I were to say, oh, if there's anything that I learned on screen that I think, I think for me, I don't know if there was anything that I learned in particular because the characters are so different, but I think just like having very freshly ran for my life and screamed at the top of my lungs and done whatever, it was just, it felt like second nature. It wasn't something that I was worried about coming on and, um, it felt very familiar. I, I didn't feel, um, too out of place. Let's put up the spoiler warning now so we could talk about a couple of things a little more freely. And Jenna, can you tell me about filming the conversation when Lorraine announces to the group that she wants to be in Farmer's Daughter? Because it's a pretty drastic shift for the characters. So I guess, what was the key to making that choice feel true to her rather than just being necessary to push the plot forward in a certain direction? Well, what I love about the script is it's not known that it's true to her because she is playing off of the horror film conservative Christian girl stereotype. So I think what you see from her, especially because she's church mouse and she's pretty quiet and and just kind of stares, as Maxine puts it. Um, for me, it was just kind of uh, a way to surprise the audience, but then also add another layer to her that wasn't really seen because I think the first half of the film, she comes off, it comes off as very um, judgmental and self-righteous. And she almost seems like she feels like she's too good to be there, just doesn't want to be there. 
Um, when I think once we finally have that conversation, we learn that it's just an un unfamiliarity with the subject and also curiosity that um, she never really knows how to correctly phrase it. And it kind of seems like this entire time she's just kind of been working up to this moment. Um, I also, it's, it's a really important scene because it's right before everything kind of goes wrong. So I think it's not only a turning point for her, but then also just the, the storyline and what's to unfold. And um, it's a it's a good reminder of the audience that like, I don't know, kind of expect the unexpected. And um, I was really excited to show that part of Lorraine because I, I do think that um, she's actually a pretty open-minded um, individual. And that's not something you would typically um, think of somebody uh, during that time period in a horror film. Very, very powerful scene there, and it's perfectly placed in the film. Uh, the movie didn't necessarily need this, but when I get very into something, I tend to want to know every single backstory detail about a character. Me, I was wondering if you ever did any backstory work on Pearl to determine when, you know, the first incident happened that sparked that kind of violent behavior in her. What brought that out in, in, in addition to just, you know, the longing of wanting to achieve her original dream? Yeah, Ty and I discussed Pearl's backstory um, a lot, uh, and 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 that's something that I really enjoyed um, with my time with Ty was that actually we, uh, you know, I'd never been so involved in 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 with my prep with a director in the past where we like we spoke, you know, for a good couple of hours daily before we ever met for the first two months. And it was like that in, in pre-production, during production, and even to this point, I mean, it's just been um, the most uh, creative collaboration that I've ever um, had the chance to, to experience. And, uh, and, and I really think that, that it helped, it helped, it, it, it helped the work a lot. Well, congratulations. This one's been weighing on my mind ever since I saw it. It's fantastic. And enjoy South by Southwest.